So as usual, Bernie Sanders had a lot of phenomenal moments at the debate. Um, his answer on climate change in particular was absolutely amazing. But one moment that I think was my favorite was the answer that he gave on foreign policy because he proved to the world that he will be unlike every other candidate. And he's not just a candidate that could potentially transform America, but he could transform the world based on what he said here. Take a look. I may have been the first person up here to make it clear that Saudi Arabia not only murdered Khashoggi, but this is a brutal dictatorship which does everything it can to crush democracy, treats women as third-class citizens. And when we rethink our American foreign policy, what we have got to know is that Saudi Arabia is not a reliable ally. We have got to bring Iran and Saudi Arabia together in a room under American leadership and say we are sick and tired of us spending huge amounts of money and human resources because of your conflicts. And by the way, the same thing goes with Israel and the Palestinians. It is no longer good enough for us simply to be pro-Israel. I am pro-Israel. But we must treat the Palestinian people as well with the respect and dignity that they deserve. What is going on in Gaza right now where youth unemployment is 70 or 80 percent is unsustainable. So we need to be rethinking who our allies are around the world, work with the United Nations, and not continue to support brutal dictatorships. I have been critical of Bernie Sanders when it comes to Israel-Palestine, and I've credited him for improving, you know, albeit slowly and gradually over the years, but he has improved nonetheless. But when he said that right there, specifically when he said that we must treat Palestinian people as well with respect and dignity that they deserve that almost made me tear up like it gave me chills because we are at a time where we have a presidential candidate on the debate stage acknowledging the humanity of palestinians i need you to just step back and understand the gravity of this this is absolutely huge People talk about unity. People talk about bringing the country together. Bernie Sanders is talking about bringing the world together. Because think about what else he said in that answer. I want to bring Saudi Arabia and Iran together under U.S. leadership. I mean, for a Jewish American politician to say that, for him to float the idea of bringing Shias and Sunnis together, because Saudi Arabia is a Sunni-majority country and Iran is a Shia-majority country. So he's talking about bringing people together who are diametrically opposed. You know, sectarian violence in the Middle East is, it's huge, right? He's talking about trying to mend those divides. Now, maybe he's not going to be successful. That is a huge task that is going to be difficult, right? But nobody else has really said that they want to try in a serious way. Nobody else will say we should respect Palestinians or actually try to get some type of peace deal without, you know, kowtowing to Israel. Bernie Sanders is a once-in-a-lifetime candidate. That little portion of the debate really should demonstrate that he is a once-in-a-lifetime candidate. Now, with how little substance these debates usually have, especially when it comes to issues related to foreign policy, that right there was probably the most profound thing that was said about foreign policy throughout the entirety of these debates. Um, with that being said, the only thing that I would have added is I would have brought up Bolivia. I would have also said, look, I am the only candidate on this stage who is brave enough to call what happened in Bolivia a coup, because guess what? It's a coup. We can't, you know, bury our heads in the sand and act like it's something that it isn't. This is a coup, right? This is something that sets him apart from Elizabeth Warren, who had a horrible botched response to that. And this also sets him apart from someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who's kind of pitching herself as the foreign policy anti-regime change candidate who hasn't said anything about the coup, and it's been over a week. So Bernie Sanders is, above all, one of the best I've ever seen on foreign policy now. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think he's perfect. I think there's still area for opportunity um, for growth when it comes to um, the issue of Israel-Palestine. 
But another thing that he said, since we're on the subject of foreign policy, is he says we have to rethink the war on terror. I need you to understand how powerful of a statement that is, because most politicians are still in this mode of, look, we've got to track down the terrorists and we, we've got to beat them, right? Even Tulsi Gabbard a few years ago said that she's a dove on regime change war and a hawk when it comes to, you know, the war on terror or take, tracking down terrorists or whatever. But the problem with the war on terror is it's creating more terrorists, right? Because the war on terror, what that really means is we are using drones to bomb terrorists, but in actuality, what's happening? We're bombing civilians mostly, right? There's so much people who are dying who are innocent, and when that happens, if you know someone who's been affected, you become radicalized in these countries. You begin, begin to hate America, right? And that makes people want to harm America because they've been harmed by America. So we have to make sure that our war on terror isn't counterproductive, and it has been counterproductive. And for Bernie Sanders to call the war on terror out like that on a debate stage, this is truly transformative. This is truly, truly transformative. Now, I don't know what he means by that, right? That was relatively vague, but just to question the war on terror narrative in and of itself is incredibly important. If he means that he wants to do away with the Bush doctrine and actually rebuild these countries that we helped destroy, that would be absolutely something that I think would be life-changing for so many people in Iraq whose lives we crushed. So overall, I mean, what Bernie Sanders said here tonight, it really is a game changer. Like he's pushing the Overton window to the left and he's really getting everyone to think about foreign policy in a different way, in a more humane way, right? Where we're not just using our hegemony to destroy the world and destroy the planet, where we're actually thinking about a humane foreign policy that, you know, emphasizes diplomacy and, you know, uh, rebuilding uh, different countries that we've destroyed. He talks about a Marshall Plan for Latin America oftentimes. He didn't say that in, you know, the debate, but, I mean, this is someone who, if he were to be commander-in-chief, I mean, this really could change the direction of you know, the U.S. in terms of foreign policy, in terms of ending U.S. imperialism, that is so crucial, right? And he's going to take on a huge battle. The military-industrial complex isn't just going to go out without a fight. They're going to give it everything they got. They're going to opt for Trump over Bernie. But the fact that he's even saying this, the fact that he's acknowledging the human dignity of Palestinian rights, it's really remarkable, and it shouldn't be remarkable. Like, acknowledging the humanity of human beings shouldn't be this surprising, but that's where we're at in American politics, to where when someone on a national stage says we need to treat Palestinians with respect and dignity that they deserve, that really is huge. It's a game changer. And nobody else is talking about foreign policy in the way that Bernie Sanders is because he is rooted in, you know, humanitarianism and humanism. And that's why he's the best candidate, you know, far and away. Um, so yeah, that was great. I don't have anything else to say. He said everything that I uh, wanted him to say with the exception of, you know, talk about Bolivia. But what he said with regard to, you know, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Israel-Palestine, phenomenal.